All right, so the coding example that I'm going to walk step by step through is how to work with these ASP tag helpers in a .NET Core MVC application. Um, and so the, the tag helper is the ASP validation for, and what this allows us to do is have validation controls uh, for different properties of a model. And so if I kind of, this is exactly kind of what you would expect. If I go to submit a student here without a name or without an age, uh, it's not going to allow me to do that. And so these are some simple validation controls. Now when I get it to this point, the, the post goes through. So this is a working demonstration of, uh, of, of the validation control. So again, ASP validation for where you start um, to validate these fields is with a student model. And so in my solution explorer, I have a models folder and a student file. Now what you're going to notice on here is I have these validation attributes to mark these different properties as both required and then my age is required and has an acceptable range. Um, what I will note about here is you will notice that the data types of our properties are nullable. And in my experience, if you don't mark these as nullable, uh, you wind up not getting the correct error messages on the front end. And so I had to make sure that these data types were nullable um, to, to get the appropriate error messages. So just a little uh, tip there as you're going through. Um, you'll make a class called student, make a couple of properties, and, um, and add these attributes. Now to add the attributes, you're going to notice you have to add this using system component model data annotation. So you need to bring in this, uh, this class so that you can work with these attributes. Um, the next thing, once you have the student model, is to wire up the student controller. And so inside of the controllers, create a student controller. So right click, add controller, create a student controller. I have an index here that's not really being used. Uh, so an index method, but I have two methods uh, that are both called create and you'll notice one is an HTTP get and one is an HTTP post. The post accepts a student object and so in order for that student to be recognized I had to add a using statement up at the top using uh, your project name dot models folder and so on a get we simply return to the uh, create view and so if I kind of go down into my view I have a student folder and here's my create view so again my when I run the create method it just returns to the uh, view called create CSHTML by convention so returning this view should load the form. This form has an ASP action of create and the post method. So you'll notice that when I insert a breakpoint here and run this, as this loads, there it goes. Uh, the slash student slash create, this takes me to my create view, create CSHTML. And when I go to submit this, it then runs the create method that accepts a student object. That student object, if I inspect, has a nullable age and a nullable name. So obviously no values, they're nullable. So that's, again, that's going back to the model. We marked our properties is nullable. Of course, this model state is not valid. So then it just sends us back 
to the create view, sending back the null student, um, which ultimately, if I hit continue, causes these error messages to display. Of course, I could add the, the bootstrap class of text danger to get those in red. Okay, so in the event that I put a name in there, um, 50, so a valid name and a valid age, I click submit. Now my student has an age and a name of Bob. And if I step into it, it just re redirects to the student index method, which just reloads the page. And, you know, it basically runs that get method uh, right here um, and, and reloads the page. I, I don't have this actually wired up to a database. That is in the next chapter that we plan on covering. So um, just wanted to demonstrate that little bit of validation on individual fields. And again, mark your model correct, nullable types with error messages. Um, in the view, you have to have the ASP validation for attribute. Last but not least, you need this if statement that says, hey, if the model is valid, do one thing. Um, however, if not, you can do something else. So you can see we're a couple different methods here, of view versus redirect to action. Uh, but both of those implement I action results, so they're both valid return types out of this create method. Um, and so that's the quick demo I wanted to do on individual field validation in this .NET Core MVC world.